Gracious Heavenly Father, I just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit, so glad that you've enabled us by your grace to focus on you, your person, and your work. We thank you for the time to study this book together. We are so aware of our limitations, and we're so aware of the carnality of our flesh. I just ask that you would open our eyes to see the truth that you would have us know. Filter out all of the foolishness, but seal to our hearts only that which is truth. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, Steve here at BlessedHopeForever.com. In Christian circles today, most well-intentioned believers are unaware of the very existence of the self-life within But coming to a biblical understanding of the self-life inside of us can promise and secure rest for the weary, defeated, frustrated, confused believer. There can be little genuine spiritual growth in the life of the Christian until he's able to receive what Scripture says about self. Self has positively no righteous function in the Christian's life. It's very sad that the majority of the believers are so unaware of self's disguised existence. However, there is an answer to the travesty of self, and that answer is the person of Jesus Christ. He actually takes the sincere heart through this painful struggling process in order to expose self's uselessness and then later grants that believer rest. Surely, Dearly beloved, the believer's greatest difficulty is in realizing that self is an utter failure when it outwardly appears to possess such great potential. Few things seem to attack sound reasoning more than for one to advocate that a believer not exercise self-effort. I mean, after all, I mean, shouldn't a Christian try the best that he possibly can? Isn't he to put out more effort when he's not doing good enough? I mean, surely everyone would agree that practice makes perfect, right? Now, those seeming truisms may seem logical to the natural reasoning, but they do not absolutely do not apply to the Christian life. Self seeks to improve something that can't be improved. In the most simple of terms, its potential can be best be described as the, the incapability of human improvement a fallen and sinful nature that can do nothing but fail is the very essence of self. This nature can't be improved upon, nor can it ever be perfected. Self is that hideous entity within each one, each one of us that by its domineering nature, it, it is that that prohibits the new creation in Christ from expressing itself. When self is discovered, however, and put in its rightful place, struggling and frustration subside. Only upon discovering the true nature of the self-life can a believer experience victory over sin, cultivate appropriate desires towards service, and gain rest within his weary soul. God, through the Holy Spirit, to Timothy said, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Save. Deliver. 1 Timothy 4.16 That's not a verse on gaining converts. It is speaking of God's people those who have already been redeemed through the person and the work of our Lord Jesus Christ who need saved. The emphasis is on doctrine. The word simply means teaching. So to, to somehow suggest that doctrine is divisive is to, you know, to say the least, seriously misleading. I'm going to suggest to you, dear folks, that doctrine is supremely important then say, well, how did God part the Red Sea? Or, 
or, or who were the giants and, and where are they today? You know, or when the next asteroid is going to land in my backyard? You know, or any other sideline distractions. And I'm not saying those are bad. I'm just saying there's something more important. We humans want instant gratification. It's, it's just built into our fallen DNA. We don't, we don't want to wait for anything, you know, because, you know, that requires patience. You know, instant mashed potatoes, instant gravy, instant pudding, instant oatmeal, quick loans, quick lube oil change. You know, you name it, you, you get the point. You know, when it, it's about the journey, folks, as much as it is the destination. I think many of God's children today just want heaven when they die. That's it. That's so they so they devote a hundred percent of their time, their energy, their resources on figuring out what they need to do to get there. You know, if all you want, folks, is heaven when you die, this video is probably not for you. Many long to understand God's will for them in Christ Jesus without realizing they are to give thanks in every circumstance for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's, that's plainly stated. That's not always easy to do. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Keep yourselves in the love of God, awaiting the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Many struggle with that. Struggle heavily with that. Jude one twenty one. Now, I don't know if he loves me, Steve. Oh. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good thing, every good thing, to do his will, and may he accomplish in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe that we have been equipped with every good thing to do His will. That equipping being the, 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 the Word of God, the grace of God, the blessings that God has given us, the person in the work of Jesus Christ. But, <coughs> unfortunately, I think the single most important topic Christians could talk about or be concerned with is, for the most part, the, the last topic discussed among Christians today. His person, His walk, His work, His walk, His work, our walk in those works, that, and resting upon that firm foundation. There is no more important discussion, folks, that we could have than the reality concerning how we as Christians ought to walk in light of who we are, who Christ is, who we are, what He's done for us. But sadly, that is not the conversation today. You know, it should be at the top of our lungs. It should be at the top of the list of every Christian's concern, but it's not. Seems the primary emphasis today is placing some degree of conditions on a salvation that comes to us solely by the grace of God alone. Where we then build upon a foundation other than the person in the work of Jesus Christ. Self. Christians today, dearly beloved, are in, in the main, are unaware of the consequences that result from our failure to do that. And that's a, a focus on self rather than Christ. One of the hardest, in my opinion, spiritual realities to grasp hold of is we have a sin nature that opposes God and His work in every area of human existence. Every kind of despicable vice and motive cohabits its existence. When fulfillment apart from Christ is sought, the old self provides the opportunities and actions. When that activity fails to measure up to the full contentment already possessed in Christ, dissatisfaction, disillusionment set in, the believer is then left to critically examine the many sins that he committed in the light of his new life in Christ and the truth of God's Word. Satan steps in with false guilt 
There is no true guilt for the believer in Christ. The presence of guilt indicates that punishment is yet required to atone for that sin, and justifiably so, but Christ has already fully paid for all the believer's sins. And absolutely no payment is left due. The old self, capable of nothing but sin, seizes this opportunity to step in, proposing to use the law that made nobody righteous, by the way, as a solution to rid the believer and self from the horrible sensations of guilt and condemnation, which only makes the matter worse. It's like pouring gas on a fire. The old self, old man, sin nature, what, sin nature, whatever phrase you want to use, puts on an artificial, a pseudo-righteous face on the outside, which produces an even greater sense of condemnation upon the already damaged believer. This is all the law can do, folks, is add greater condemnation. That was and that is its only function. Self will not wait quietly for God's timing because, because it has to save face and pride through some attempt of vain personal effort. Romans ch chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, at the beginning of the chapter, we read, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same function. This is clearly brought out in uh, the flesh-spirit battle in Galatians chapter 5, which is where we may be going after this. The, the, the flesh self attempts to use the law to speed up the sanctification process. And the only result is an increase of sin. The same is true of Romans chapter 7, where self is again referred to as flesh. Sanctification is only through the truth, John 17, 17. And it's according to the sovereign choice of God, the Holy Spirit, as to which truths that He will open your understanding to. We are out on a limb, folks, when we try to lead some other believer into some other area other than the area in which he's actually, God is actually guiding him. The most common source for misdirected desires is peer pressure, what I'd call pulpit pressure, which works upon self to conform the believer's life to others' requirements in areas not dealt with by the Holy Spirit. Most often these other Believers, they point only to the areas that they've been, they've succeeded in themselves. God, you know, you won't, rather than mention the areas that they themselves are weakest in. In Romans chapter 14, accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on his opinions. And verse 4 says, Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands or he falls. And he will stand, for the Lord's able to make him stand. Some of you Christians out there, who do you think you are? The reality is faith, and whether or not it has been invested in your life, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And this applies to all areas of the believer's life. Because we've all been granted a measure of faith in the area of God, the Holy Spirit's own choosing. For by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but think of yourself with sober judgment according to the measure of faith God's given you. And this must not slip our attention. If you're a Christian and you're hearing me, listen. Life is 
Jesus Christ. Service is Christ Jesus. The, moment, the, the common teaching today is that we must work for Jesus. Our enemy Satan has turned that around. The truth is that Jesus himself must work through us or no spiritual work is ever accomplished. All that we ourselves are capable of accomplishing is the display of self and its resultant sin. The problem is we don't take sin serious enough. I know, for I know that that is in me and my flesh dwells no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. These self-efforts may initially look good on the outside, folks, but they will ultimately burn up at the judgment seat of Christ. So, what shall we do that we may do the works of God? John 6, 29, believe. It is the righteousness that is based on faith, not yourself, not your best efforts. The works of God that last in eternity are His works through us that came through faith that was freely bestowed on us by grace. We don't boast in the flesh. We don't boast in our faith. And there are no conditions upon God's grace. And this leads to true, true, honest-to-God worship. The true elements of worship consist of worshiping God for who He is, all He's done in your life, what He's presently doing in you, and what He's doing through your life and in for others. And when that true worship occurs, the false is dispelled when He allows us to respond to Him in spirit and truth worship. We are involved in supernatural truth that does not tolerate error. The true nature of the Christian life and walk is nothing more than the traits that normally show up in a person's life who has his life. It's God's work. It's not yours. All right? Quite simply, your exposure to this truth, to His book, as represented in God's Word, in His Word alone, that will guide you folks along the right path. No other man's teaching will. God works in our life through truth to empower us to refuse the prompting of others to become enslaved again to the law. Therefore, we need to become increasingly more aware of the deadly defeating element of the self-life within. God will honor this truth of His and increasingly make you more and more sensitive to self's enslaving influence. In fact, he'll bring numerous trials in your life that make self flare up and show its true nature. Not pretty. And it's that that we judge. We're judging God's work and reckoning ourselves dead to sin but alive unto God and Christ is vital. Self blames itself for its failure of Christian accomplishment, believing it's being punished, and it intimidates you until you believe likewise. But our Lord will faithfully make you aware of just who it is that's being manifest during those times. Study this book, dearly beloved. Study this book honestly and diligently. And with greater frequency, you will start seeing the passages of Scripture that teach on law begin to pop right off the page at you. You will not be able to avoid the reality that law has absolutely no place in the believer's life as a standard for personal effort in obtaining righteous accomplishments. The Holy Spirit will increasingly lead you to be abhorrent of the slightest suggestion that you return to law. The safeguarding of your living relationship with Christ will become as vital as protecting the earthly family that you love. And you will ever increasingly view any attempt by others to place you under the law as what it really is, an assassination attempt on your spiritual life in Christ. Dearly beloved, listen to me. Our human being cannot produce the divine. 
Deity produces the divine. You're not the vine, you're the branch. This exposure will merely allow you to be receptive rather than resistant when He places these desires within your heart. He leads us, we do not lead Him. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for continuing to allow me this visit into your most holy of holies, your spiritual life. I came not as a robber, but as a servant. My prayer is that our Lord Jesus Christ will cover your sore and open wounds of spiritual abuse with the calm, healing balm of Himself. For whatever reason caused you to forget why you came to Christ in the first place, dearly beloved, do come to Him again that you may have life and that more abundantly.